Yong Sung, Corporate President and Chief Strategy Officer of Samsung Electronics. Welcome to the Industrial Salama and back to Stanford University. Oh, thank you for having me again. Great to have you here. Tell us a bit about how the business has changed in the eight years since you joined the company. Well, you know, the business is always changing. So, uh, but I think really last 10 years, we've seen drastic changes. And part of that is really to do with the mobility and cloud that are really changing the way not only we are using for social media, but also the way we can conduct our business. I think the B2B business tools, all the way to consumer experience is changing because of the way we are using our supercomputers in our hand, 24 by seven, and all the business models that we known that we have known are disrupted. And that's really the big change that we see it. So when we think of mobility for Samsung, that means two things, not only phones like you talked about, but the automotive industry. And a few years ago, Samsung made its acquisition of Harman. How's that going and what have you learned in the three years since you acquired the company? So uh, mobility, let me just give you some one background and then talk about Harman. Okay. So mobility, basically, we are really a known as a phone company, right? So we have, you know, we have a number one market share in the world for number of phones that are sold, uh, over 350 million phones a year. As a Samsung brand, we have over 2 billion phones that are installed around the world. So that really has a tremendous reach to consumers around the world. And that really helped us to become a global brand. But also we provide 5G network now. So in many ways, we are really betting the future of network is going to be 5G. And Samsung is behind much of uh, networks like what Verizon has done with their fixed wireless deployment in the US and Korea, Japan, and others that are happening as well. And then I think the other part is that we also develop semiconductors for mobile community, from radios to processors to memories that are pretty much all the phones out there. And when you think about, we talked about Harman a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the movement of the mobility in the car space. Why did you make the acquisition and, and what have you learned in the last few years? So three years ago, in fact, it is exactly three, almost three years ago, right? It's in two months, it'll be exactly three years ago. There are two primary reasons why we acquired Harman. One is really around auto, as you mentioned. Okay. The other is really around audio. And as you know, Harman is a iconic brand that has mm -hmm. stand for 70 years, from JBL brand all the way to Mark Levinson, to AKG, to Infinity. A whole bunch of these brands are really built what Harman is as the number one audio company in the world. With our video display, we thought that audio would be highly complimentary. So that's one position of really providing experience to our consumers that are complete audio with a complete video. And then on the top of that, we really believe the future of automotive is going to be based on the smartphone technology that mm -hmm. we experienced that are moving into automobile as an extension of our 24 by seven experience. So if you look at the tomorrow's car, you will see the 5G radios, you see the whole bunch of batteries mm -hmm. and whole bunch of sensors and a whole bunch of UI, UX entertainment. In many ways, a lot of the technology will come from the uh, mobile community that we know of it. So in many ways for Samsung, the synergy would be bring the technology we developed into vertical market like automotive and give consumers much better experience so they are connected 24 by seven, using from mobility to service from your home all the way to your work. If you think about Samsung as a large global company, and you, the technology you talked about, semiconductor manufacturing, communication, storage, entertainment. How do you think about sharing technology across the different groups in Samsung, and how do you deal with it on a geographic basis? So, in a large company, it sounds like a great idea to share, but as you know, large companies have many silos. Mm -hmm. And it is about you know, designing the organization structure and managing the complexity and overcoming those barriers. And it's, uh, it's not that easy, I, I, I'll tell you. Because if you think about each business, you know, whether it's $100 billion mobile business, whether it's an $80 billion consumer sem uh, the semiconductor business, or $50 billion consumer business, or $10 billion Harman business, they all have management, they all have business, they all have focus, they have customers. So how do you communicate and share among these teams are one of the challenges and making sure we don't reinvent mm -hmm. at the same time bring new ideas quickly among our teams. So sometimes we create central organizations like our AI center 
around the world to support globally. Mm -hmm. The idea is supporting all of the initiatives around AI. But that's an example of some critical areas that we have to share equally, then we will embark on global corporate initiative. So centralize where it makes sense and give autonomy where it also makes sense. Absolutely. If you look forward the next decade, what do you think will be the biggest areas of change that will impact Samsung and Samsung's customers? Well, I think, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I think the whole area is going from what I call physical products mm -hmm. to now it's about experienced products. And if you think about our mindset in the past was the product was in the center. And we tried to develop experience around that. But I think now we have to put consumer in the center mm -hmm. and put products around those so that we have a consistent experience. Because they're all mobile, they're all connected, we need to give a consistent experience. And it has to be open. You have to be able to use a bunch of other tools, products that can be able to take advantage of. So open ecosystem will be a very critical part of the initiative. When you think about Samsung historically, it's been a product company manufacturing products, chips, and the like. And yet in this world where the customer is in the center, hardware and software will become increasingly important. How do you bring those capabilities inside of the organization when maybe those skill sets don't exist today? So uh, in first of all, I would say that um, even today's product, if you look at mobile phone, I would say 80% of our engineering is already software. Mm. Because without software, you, can, you cannot build that ecosystem. You cannot provide the kind of layers. But I think the future is about how do you take advantage of different software solution capabilities and be able to create a convergent experience. So convergent means it's not just what you know in one area, but it is really about combining skills from different groups. I mean, you can really see example would be like health. Mm -hmm. Today, health isn't just health by itself. IT will impact health, and health will get changed because of IT technology. Like gene sequencing would not be possible by based on its own medical breakthrough and biological breakthrough. It had the benefit of optical technology, storage technology, and computer technology that enabled to decode human gene sequencing 2003 or four time frame, right? Wow. Last question for you, you're based here in Silicon Valley. How do you think about building that bridge between Silicon Valley and back to Suwon in Korea, mm -hmm. where not only time differences, cultural differences, geographic distance, how do you build that bridge? So it is a, a challenge because of the distance, also because of the culture, and because also the way of the gravity is. So you have to really bring bright ideas that can impact and they can get their attention. And we need to figure out how to go from country road to highway of idea sharing, and that's a challenge. And we do it not only through our own ideas, but really bring external ideas that are bright and really the innovative people from Israel to Austria to Germany to Silicon Valley, let them all be part of that ecosystem. And I think building that ecosystem, building that highway is part of our mission. Young corporate president and chief strategy officer for Samsung Electronics, thank you so much for coming back to Stanford. It's always great to have you back on campus. Thanks very much. I'm looking forward to having your class again. Thanks so much. Thank you.